Welcome to item 2. Today we're discussing and analyzing Showtime's Black Monday Season 1 Episode 3. Let's recap. The episode starts with the team trying to give Mo ideas on how to get closer to Blair so that once he marries into the Georgina fortune, Mo can get his shares from him. Meanwhile, Dawn has been acquiring the remaining public float of Georgina's shares and brings up a point that the quarter is ending in the next two days. They need to hide their Georgina holdings, not to reveal to the street what they're up to. She claims that the Jammer Group's shell companies are full, so they need to park their shares with friends and family. The team decides to split the shares and get them signed over to their loved ones. Later, it's revealed that Keith is actually gay and has a boyfriend, even though he's married with a son, who is about to have a bar mitzvah. He tries to offload his shares to his wife, but she wants nothing to do with it. He ends up parking the shares with that boyfriend. Dawn tries to offload her shares to her parents, who don't fall for it, and her husband ends up taking them in his name. Blair and Mo have some heart-to-hearts about their lives, and Blair says he's struggling to be with his fiance because she comes from a super rich family, and he's more from a humble background. Mo ends up parking his shares with Keith's son because he actually gifts them to the son at the bar mitzvah. The episode ends with Blair showing up at the bar mitzvah drunk and high, and announcing that he's called off the wedding with Tiffany, or Tiff, the heiress to the Georgian Jean's fortune. Now for the concepts. I think this part of the show is a little contrived when Don says that the shell companies are actually full. I don't really know how a shell company gets quote unquote full. They have bank accounts and they can hold money and that money as far as I know is infinitely expandable so you could keep putting money and or assets or whatever you want into those accounts. But let's just say for this episode that that is true and that's why they need to park their shares. So what does it mean by parking shares? That just means that they're going to hold those shares in the accounts of whoever they sign over the shares to for a while. Those people will probably earn some interest or some sort of compensation for the time that they hold the shares. Then the shares would be moved back into the Jammers Group's account once the quarter had ended and all the reportings had been filed. At one point in the episode, when Dawn is trying to park the shares with her parents, her husband mentions trading the Indian rupee. What he's referring to is trading currencies, and you can trade currencies just like you trade any other assets where you're essentially buying a currency, but at the same time are selling currency that you're working with. So for example, if I I live in the US, I'd be buying rupees by selling US dollars. In the 1980s, specifically in 1987, the rupee traded for about 12.5 to 13 units per $1. So one US dollar would have gotten you about 12.5 to 13 rupees in India. At another point in the episode, Don mentions the term robber baron. This term refers to a person who has become rich through ruthless and cunning means. It typically is used to refer to the people from the early 19th century, Think people like John D. Rockefeller and Andrew Carnegie, J.P. Morgan. Those guys were considered the original robber barons. If there are any TV shows, movies, topics you would like covered in the future, please let me know in the comments. Please subscribe, and for announcements, check out my Twitter at Nexace Network and Instagram at Nexace Network. Finally, look out for my Patreon page.